This is the 2021 Toyota Corolla hatchback. You might be focusing on the word Corolla or even on the Toyota badge, but I want to draw your attention to the hatchback part because that is what makes this little thing pretty special. If you're in the market for a small hatchback, is the Corolla the one to get? Let's find out. Before we go any further, I should explain that the Toyota Corolla is the juggernaut of the automotive industry. What am I talking about? 45 million. Toyota has sold more than 45 million Corollas since the 1960s. But we're here to talk about this car, the Corolla hatchback. Now, it competes with cars like the Honda Civic hatchback, the Mazda 3, and the Hyundai Elantra hatch. All three of those are good cars, so what Toyota wants to do is compete against them with a combination of looks, price, and of course their well-founded reputation for reliability. But let's start with the looks. To be the best-selling car in the history of the world, you have to appeal to a lot of people, which is a really polite way of saying you gotta be bland. They do sell a lot of cars. However, Toyota, they're painfully aware of their stodgy reputation, so they're trying to change things up. And with the Corolla hatchback, they're trying to make the car more exciting with this extreme design. We've seen this grill on other Toyotas, like the Avalon, only the Avalon is two, maybe three times as big as the Corolla hatchback. So the way it works here, it's like a miniature schnauzer, right? It's a lot of head, but this tiny little body. And the rest of the car, um, it's pretty good. You know, to me, it reads like a, like a JDM hatchback, a JDM, Japanese domestic market. Again, overall, I can't take my eyes off the grill, and maybe that's the point. Inside the Corolla hatchback, the design ethos is the opposite of the outside, meaning it's rather restrained and kind of kind of upscale. Um, I want to call out in particular the bright work, and that's uh, metal trim, although in this case, I think it's plastic trim that looks like metal. But check out this cool bar. It goes all the way across the dash, and it actually makes the cabin feel bigger than it is. And then it really smartly wraps around the air vent. And that, you know, if that was in a, a six-figure car, it wouldn't look out of place. So killer design Toyota. Um, you know, th this car costs what it costs, and so you're gonna have a couple pieces of the car that don't feel so good, like the plastic covering the A-pillar is particularly bad. The most important part of this Corolla hatchback is the manual transmission. Woo, that's cool. Getting rarer, but it's still here. Um, and as we're gonna talk about when we get to the performance section, this is the most important part of this car. The entire interior is focused around this central eight inch touchscreen. Um, and you know, it is what it is. It's a Toyota touchscreen. It works the way it works. It does come standard with uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The seats are pretty nice. It's a nice mix of cloth and leather. Behind the driver, it's a small car. There's not a ton of room for full-size adults in the back. However, if you fold the seats down, it's a hatchback, so there's plenty of cargo space. On paper, the Corolla hatchback doesn't have much going for it performance-wise. Under the hood, there's a 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine, uh, no turbochargers, no hybrid, nothing like that. Makes 168 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. Front-wheel drive only, and a lot of the competitors are using turbochargers. And yet, and yet, the first time I drove this thing, I was blown away. I, I remember like thinking to myself and saying out loud to the other people there, like, this is a Corolla? Why would Toyota make a Corolla handle this well? How did they do it? But it, it does drive incredibly well. It's just fun to throw around. It's like, a, it's like a hot hatch, if you will, although maybe the power is down a little bit. As we said, this one does have a manual transmission, so of course it's the one to get. Also, of course, it's the one you won't get. You'll probably buy the CVT, but don't do that. Buy the manual. I should mention, Gas mileage, the CVT gets slightly better miles per gallon than the manual, but but just, you know, come on, be different. Get the manual. Trust me, get the manual. The Toyota Corolla hatchback is a safe car. It has a five-star crash rating, and the Insurance Institute has given it a top safety pick. It also comes standard with Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. That means there's a lot of standard safety features such as automatic emergency braking. Toyota wants to compete on price, and guess what? The Corolla hatchback is cheaper than the competition. This thing starts at $21,500 for the manual, 
at $1,000 for the CVT. And if you want the XSE trim, like I'm standing next to, that's another $3,000 on top. The Honda Civic hatchback with the CVT starts at $23,000. Add another 500 bucks if you want to climb into a Mazda 3. So looking at nothing but price, the Corolla hatchback is a pretty good value. If there's one thing I want you to walk away knowing about the Toyota Corolla hatchback, it's this. This is the best Corolla you can buy. Yes, it's a hatchback, yes, it's a manual, but trust me, this is the best one. And think about it, the price is right, you get the versatility and functionality of a hatchback, the car is shockingly good to drive, and you might even like the looks. So, if you're in the market for a small, sporty hatchback, I urge you to consider the Corolla hatchback. To check out the latest rankings, go to motortrend.com slash cars. This is the 2021 Mazda CX-30. This model has been around for a couple of years and it's aimed at the urban subcompact crossover buyer who wants a little bit of style and a little bit of fun. The thing is, this segment is filling up fast. We can't buy enough of these small crossovers. We just love them. The question becomes, does the CX-30 have enough Mazda DNA baked into it, meaning some style, some premiumness, some performance, to stand out from the crowd? Let's find out. Americans don't like hatchbacks. We won't buy them. However, raise it up in the air a couple of inches, call it an SUV, and it's take my money. The CX-30 finds itself in an increasingly competitive segment. Right now, it's competing against vehicles like the Subaru Crosstrek, the Kia Seltos, and the Chevy Trailblazer. However, unlike those, you'll notice that there's no pretense of off-road capability. This car is designed for driving around city streets, and that's what Mazda's counting on. Buyers who are city slickers that like the act of driving, but are still convinced they need a small, compact SUV. Design-wise, the CX-30 is using Mazda's newest design language. The front's pretty good looking, very similar to the Mazda 3. However, unlike the Mazda 3 hatchback, there's a lot of chrome up here, but that's okay, it looks nice. Coming down the side, you know, they have to make it read like an SUV. Remember, it's really a hatchback. So to do so, they slap on this big, you know, half circle of plastic and the thing can't go off-road. It has off-road fenders, kind of a miss. The wheels and tires are small, kind of down market. Not so good right here. Coming back, very nice, good greenhouse, good bright work. And when you get to the rear of the vehicle, it looks just like any other SUV, which is what the people want. I'm inside the Mazda CX-30 and it feels just like I'm inside a Mazda 3 because the interiors are identical. What you need to know is that Mazda has ambitious aspirations. They wanna move up market. And as a result, their cabins are getting more and more premium. There's a lot of nice material in here, like this dashboard. This is covered in leather. It's actually a really nice soft leather. The armrest is leather, the seats are white leather, which is a rather bold choice inside of an SUV. Then there's some stuff that looks like leather, but when you touch it, you realize quickly like, oh, that's some odd type of rubber that's not really leather, but that's okay, looks nice. And then there's some stuff that doesn't look or feel that nice, like the top of the dash here. But again, this begins life as a $23,000 car, so you're gonna have some stuff like that. The other bad part is infotainment screen, not a touch screen, you can't touch it, you have to use an old school BMW style iDrive controller. It doesn't do very much, it's not very functional. The good news is the graphics look really premium. Behind me in the back seat, not a ton of room. Remember though, this is a subcompact size vehicle, so there's not supposed to be. However, Mazda redesigned the hatch of the CX-30 to be larger and now you can get bigger things into it. The big takeaway though is in this segment, at this price point, this is an incredibly premium cabin. In terms of performance, small crossovers are not known as driver's cars. However, Mazdas are. So 
Mazda engineers have spent a lot of time and effort making sure that this thing drives better than it has to. I've driven it, it does handle very well. In terms of power, under this hood is a inline four 2.5 liter naturally aspirated motor, makes 186 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. It's not too much. If you need more power, there is a 250 horsepower turbo version available. This one's all wheel drive. It could also come as front wheel drive. Front wheel drive models will get slightly better gas mileage than the all wheel drive. However, if all four wheels are driven, you get all weather capability, makes it quite sure footed. No matter which CX-30 you choose, you are buying the best driving vehicle in the segment. However, ride quality suffers as a result. In terms of safety, it might be small, but the CX-30 is a safe vehicle. It has a five-star crash rating, and the Insurance Institute says it's a top safety pick plus. What's the plus mean? You get that when you have a lot of standard active safety features, such as adaptive cruise controls. And on the higher trim models, the headlights turn with the steering wheel. In terms of price, you can get into a Mazda CX-30 for right around $23,000, which is totally in line with the competition. The Subaru Crosstrek is $23,000, that Seltos is $23,000, a Chevy Trailblazer is $4,000 less, but that's a whole nother story. This one next to me is a premium model. Remember, it's all wheel drive. So it sits at just about $32,000. However, remember with this one, all wheel drive, plus that great interior, and it really is a great car to drive. If there's one thing I want you to know about the Mazda CX-30, it's that if you need a subcompact crossover, this one is the enthusiast choice. Plus, you get a sharp design, a premium cabin, and the price is right. Look, you know it, I know it, Mazda knows it. You're never going off-road, stop pretending. Instead, why don't you buy a crossover that's actually good to drive? <laughs> to see vehicle rankings and a complete buyer's guide, please visit motortrend.com cars.